Hey everyone, welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Well, true to form, we're changing up again. Uh, <laughs> as you've probably noticed by now, we've got a little bit of a different background. Uh, playing around, trying out different uh, settings for the green screen and things. Uh, it's easier to fix my lighting when I have the green screen background rather than the shop and things like that. I don't know. I may show the shop in the background again at some point, but this is definitely something that I'm working towards, you know, figuring out the camera, the microphone, everything. So thanks for bearing with me and being my guinea pigs. Anyway, buckle your seatbelts, kids, because this is a long story here. I shut down the whole organization for a week. I work in a very large community center that is non-profit. We have tons of stuff, like children's daycare, open college, physiotherapy for seniors and disabled people. We got six huge apartment buildings for senior citizens throughout the city, activities for immigrants and unemployed. We got a cafeteria and a restaurant and more. Now I love my work. I got promotion after promotion. I started as an IT tech support person. I was the only IT guy in the whole organization. When I started, we got like maybe 80 persons working there, including the teachers in our open college. Today, we're over 200 strong. So anyway, it's a relaxed and non-toxic work environment, as I got tons of work to do as I'm alone with everything that runs with ones and zeros. I have to plan my work a little different than the rest of the bunch. So I have 100% flexible work times, meaning I work when I see fit. I'm on salary. They pay me once a month, not hourly. The executive director approves this as I can maintain the whole organization's IT infrastructure without any downtime. I come and go as I see best for me doing my job. This worked fine for about 12 years or so. Everyone was happy and I was respected because not only I got the job done, but my job didn't cause any downtime on IT at all. The only downtime was an hour or less if someone's workstation broke down, etc. I always had spares ready to go. I also was 24-7 on call and went to the office in the middle of my vacations if needed and when I was able to go. I worked on weekends and sometimes nights during the week just to get things done so there's no downtime at office hours. That time in my career we had pretty massive amount of servers, 8 server machines just for Microsoft stuff, 4 Linux servers and a couple BSDs for open college. I had a maintenance routine divided into small maintenance that I did after office hours and large maintenance that I did after office hours and continued through the night, and the huge ones that needed me to live at the office over the weekend. And as there was no such thing as overtime, we had an agreement that whenever I had to work more than 8 hours, I would get paid leave instantly on the next day. So if I came to work at 8 on Monday, stayed until everyone left, and then started the smaller maintenance that would usually take like 2-3 to three hours max, I would then come 2-3 to three hours later to work the next day. And if it took long enough, I could take the whole next day off. I always informed the whole organization that maintenance was due and I would deal with it and take X amount of leave the next day. No problems with anyone. Business as usual, until. We hired a new project manager. A middle-aged lady that has the most piercing blue eyes that drill into your soul and suck all the joy and will to live out of you. And she was a corporate manager. It was her first time working in non-profit organizations, so she was super shocked how relaxed our office was. There were complaints about everything that I don't want to list here because only one is relevant. Working times. I did not get how she was able to boss around our friggin' director when she was only a project manager. I mean, WTF. I was at that time already a system administrator. But anyway, soon came the time for large maintenance. Some updates for accounting software and some smaller things to open college end. I put a notice to our organization's email list like always and state that large updates are going in starting this evening and ending before tomorrow morning and that I would not be in the office the next day. Email me or call me if there's any problems. I never gave any time estimates because there was always a chance that they won't hold. If something goes wrong with updates or other stuff, it's my butt who has to fix it anyway and then it's God knows how many hours it takes. So evening comes, everybody goes home and I wait till the last one logs out from their workstation and go to work. Routine stuff, some updates, weird database conversion that has to be done every time our accounting or wages software gets an update. 
It takes time, but only like 6 hours or so, as it's only the accounting database. I finish my stuff and head home. The next morning I wake up around 7am, make some coffee and head to my gaming computer and think, ah, all day nothing but EVE Online. At around maybe 9 something my work phone rings. I answer and it's the project manager. I'll just call her PMS from now on. PMS yells to me on the phone, something like this, don't remember the actual words. PMS, where the heck are you? Me, at home, it's my day off. PMS, oh, well, we have a situation here, I need you here now. Me, okay, I'll be there in 15 minutes. I still live pretty close to my work. On my way, I thought, did I mess something up last night? Can't be. I tested everything and it would have been accounting calling me or secretary if it was about updates at Open College End. Well, whatever. I'll see you then. I rush to the office and go straight to the project manager's office. Me. Hey, what's up? PMS. My printer's out of toner. Get me a new one. Me. Um, out of toner? Is this a situation? There's toners on a shelf in the storage on the first floor. All desktop printers are the same and use the same toner, so why did you not get it yourself? All this was explained to you a week ago. PMS. I'm not going to change any toners, boy. Do your job. Boy. Me. Okay, whatever. I head to storage to get the new toner. We have a policy that all employees deal with their own desktop printers, like add papers to them and change the toner because it's as easy as putting your effing shoes on and it takes these trivial tasks away from me, who already is overworked and underpaid. I got back and changed the toner, then I head back home. She actually stopped her whining for a while and I thought all was good, but after a couple more maintenance days and nights, she called an administrative meeting. So there was me, our new wages clerk, who was also an HR manager, director, office manager, and PMS. PMS starts the meeting, again, something like this as I don't remember the actual words. PMS. I wanted to talk about work times and how OP has been slacking and taking leave on his own accord. I thought that in this community we all share the same rules, do we not? Me. Sorry, but as the same rules do apply to all, work times don't. We do different kind of work here, so same exact work times just don't work. PMS. You have been at home when people here have problems with their computer. Me. Yes, and they call me if there's a problem, and 99.9% .9 of the time we get it sorted out by phone. PMS. But your home is not your workplace. Your office is. Yes, but as I have to work late and nights sometimes here, I take the paid leave ASAP like we have agreed. PMS. Well, all work should be done at normal office hours. Why do you even have to work at nights or weekends? Me. Because no one here wants any downtime on their work? Just to clarify, there were at this point maybe 120 people strong. At least 80 of those used workstations or laptops for their work. Even the darn fitness instructors. Everything at this point was digital and ran ones and zeros. Physicists meet with a client. They do their stuff and then physicists does the mandatory report on the computer. They make all the plans for clients on the computer. Kitty Daycare uses computers daily to be in contact with parents and etc. Everything's ran by computers now. PMS. Nonsense, you can do your job at office hours like the rest of us. I look at Director as I know HR and office manager don't give a flip about this, and for some reason Director says to me, Director. Yeah, PMS and I have been talking about this issue for a few times now with the whole staff and, and from now on our old agreement is no longer valid. Are you sure? Like 110% sure about this? All my work? Server and network maintenance too? At office hours? Can we make new written agreement on this like we did on my open hours? Director. Yes, come by at evening before we close the office for today. I'll have the agreement ready by then. Me. Okie dokie. And I leave to continue whatever I was doing before this crap is about to hit the fan meeting. As you can guess what is about to happen. Ha ha ha. I mean there was zero toxicity at our work. Everyone was happy. And then. Ugh, one corporate goblin just has to come and create this tension. Oh well, they're about to learn their lesson. I go to see the director later in the evening and we sign the agreement about my new work times. I check the agreement and tell the director that he forgot something. 
There's no mention about the time frame I need to inform whole staff when maintenance is about to happen. Only that I have to do all my work at office hours from 8.15 to 15.30. I told you this was long. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Also, as I'm on salary, overtime is not allowed unless we have an agreement on it. And whoopsie, old agreement that stated my overtime hours would be paid leave hour by hour. New agreement had nothing about overtime. So absolutely no overtime hours, period. But I didn't mention this to him. He just shrugs his shoulders and says, just send him an email in the morning if you're about to do it that day. Alrighty then, will do. I'll just start my waiting game. I love my work and all the people here, but I'm about to make myself the most hated man here. At least for a while. A couple of weeks go by. I do a few small maintenance jobs here and there, and downtime is only from one hour to two hours. And I usually do it at lunchtime so everyone gets as little downtime as possible, because I'm waiting for the huge one. And patience is rewarded. In a few months, accounting and wages are getting huge updates. I mean, this is the stuff that usually means that I stay whole weekends at the office sleeping on the floor with a sleeping bag. For those couple of hours I still can. I still think that I should just go and tell the director that we're about to hit the big one. Nope, I'm not. I also had saved some smaller updates just for this occasion. Ha 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 ha. I've never felt so evil in my life. So the day comes and I go to the office 815 sharp and send the message to the whole organization. Good morning. It's OP. And today is again maintenance day. Prepare for some downtime. This maintenance concerns the whole organization as I have to update all the servers and some routers too. There's also a huge update on financial software and it's critical and has to be done. I will start operations at 11 as usual. Thank you for your understanding. Sincerely, OP. Remember that I never have told anyone any estimates how long maintenance will take. <laughs> I do my other stuff and then ding ding, it's 11 o'clock. Time to start phase one. First, I kick every employee out of the network. Easy. I got a script for that. Phase two. Then I hit OS updates on every server and go get some coffee. Now everyone got kicked out from the network so they can't access anything on the network. File servers offline. Print servers offline. Database servers offline. They can't even use the photocopier because you have to be logged into AD, Active Directory, to use it with the RDIF card. They still have access to their desktop and they can use the desktop applications, but as company policy, all data is stored to the file servers as no one is allowed to save any files on their laptops and workstations. Also, they can't use the internet at all because every server is now downloading updates from the internet. And I made sure every Linux and Unix box downloads everything possible. My phone starts to ring. Me. This is IT services, how can I help? Me. Yeah, it's a big maintenance today. I did send an email this morning about it. No, I don't know how long it's going to take. All day at least. Maybe. We'll see. Click on the other end. 12 o'clock. People are starting to return from lunch. The whole network is still down and stays down. 1300-ish, I start to get phone calls about how long it's going to take. Some people come to my office when they can't reach me by phone. I just tell them that the estimated time is unknown on these big updates. Shouldn't take more than a day or two. Day or two. This is what stirred the whole place. It was like a beehive all of a sudden. People came to me screaming and yelling. Why do you do this to us? Why? Cancel the updates now. I need to work. I just shrugged my shoulders. Sorry. Can't do anything about it. It's impossible to cancel or stop once it's put into motion. Just hang on. 
Even the director came to see me and was at first angry and then a little confused. I told him that this is what maintenance is. It is what it is and nothing will change it, at least not this instant. Everyone just has to suck it up and wait until it's done. I'm just doing my job here. So I just read some IT magazines and had two as I was waiting for the servers to update. Then 3.30 came and I went home. Some people were still sitting at their offices waiting and looked at me with the most questionable faces asking where I'm going. Home. See you tomorrow. Next day I go and check the servers in the morning. Almost done all, almost done, all of them. Unix and Linux are peachy. I still have to reboot all the Windows servers. I do that. I could just boot them all at once, but I feel more evil by the minute and I just boot them one at a time, waiting for the server to fully boot. I log in and check that updates are okay before moving to the next one. And of course, after every server, I pull my own laptop and make a maintenance report in detail. No one reads these reports, but office managers demand them anyway. They go straight to the archive and into the recycle bin a year later. After I'm done with the servers, it's around 2 o'clock and I haven't had my lunch yet, so I go and have lunch. I come back at 3.10 and start to plan the next day. I need to install updates for the financial applications and I want to do a checklist so that all goes smoothly. Didn't complete my list and plan so it's 3.30 again and I'm going home. Did I mention that it's now Thursday? I started my maintenance on Tuesday. I finished my checklist and plan for financial software updates early. I start dropping updates one by one before lunchtime. I could drop them all at once, but I just want to go by the book and follow my checklist. By the way, it's recommended by this software supplier that updates are installed one by one. All goes smooth and I put the databases to do their weird conversion. As I'm not a total man part, I drop the rest of the smaller updates on other server side programs while I wait for the database thingy to complete. Well, as usual, it takes forever, so I head back home when the clock hits 3.30. It's Friday, and I'm the only person in our 120 person company working since 11 last Tuesday. Everyone is so ticked. They have to come to the office and do nothing. Some are doing cleaning operations to their desk. Some are tidying paper archives, etc. Most are just sipping coffee and reading magazines. Internet's been fine since Wednesday, but I don't think anyone's noticed. Lol. I feel sorry for the physicists who have to use pen and paper to all the clients and then later sort everything out on their computers. Restaurant and cafeteria are fine as I didn't mess with the cashier system at all. Friday morning and I get all okay from database conversion. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Okay, I think I can now begin the services on servers. One by one, of course. I take my sweet time, using every break I'm entitled to and have a full length lunch break. Finally, 3 o'clock sharp, I sent an email to the whole organization that maintenance is now done and you can now re-log in to get access to the network. Thank you for your patience. Next estimated huge maintenance is in about 3 or 4 months. Director, office manager, accountant, and wages clerk had been at home most of the week. I think I saw them Wednesday morning, but not after that. Project manager was ticked Wednesday too, but left me alone as I explained that if I have to go to some meetings with every branch about this downtime issue, downtime would only get longer, as I wouldn't be actively working on it. Next week we had a new administration meeting, and my old open work times with overtime leave was active again. I got it in writing. No one ever complained about my paid overtime free time ever again. I wasn't concerned about getting fired as, in my country, firing employees is hard. It's super hard to get rid of someone. And as I had a written agreement about work times and my work contract clearly stated what I do at my work, there was no way they could have any case of sacking my temporarily evil butt. But in the end, all was good. A couple weeks and everyone's happy to work again, with no downtime at all. Update. The villain. PMS was chill for the rest of her career. I even visited her family house and fixed their home computer and installed a new printer and Wi-Fi for them. She retired from work a few years ago. She was actually sorry about what happened and took all the blame. There's been a few longer downtimes, but those were always hardware failures. When servers go boo-boo, there's no spare ones to put up in an hour. 
but thanks to virtualizations and a lot cheaper hardware, I'm prepared for that too now. Well, I'm glad that PMS finally came around and realized that, you know, she was being kind of a Karen at best. And it's good that you got to show them exactly what happens when you have to work on the same schedule as everybody else. Without some flex, tech support really wouldn't work well for most companies. Well, hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you've enjoyed this content, would you do me a favor and give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fact out with the beard telling you stories. Oh yeah, and let me know what you think about the new uh, green screen background, blah, 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 whatever. If anything looks better, worse, different, let me know. See ya.